I've been watching YouTube just about every day of my life since 2010, and I am proudly a child of YouTube because as a person with social anxiety, it just works out well for me. But over time, I found that content has gone from genuinely helpful tips, people sharing their life, just overall entertainment, to basically just selling a shit at all times, no matter what we're watching. No matter where I go, I cannot help but be bombarded with products that I must have or that I need. And it got me thinking about this study I saw once. It said that we see between six and 10,000 advertisements per day. And I always thought that sounded outrageous until I realized that most things that I consume online are now considered advertisements. And I've taken measurable steps to avoid these advertisements, okay? I've unsubscribed from every brand email. I don't follow brand on social media. I don't follow creators who constantly make me feel like I need to buy something. And I also realized while preparing for this video that I likely stopped scrolling on Instagram because I was so sick of seeing ads. Half of my feed on Instagram was just ads and they're savvy. They gave me ads of things that I was genuinely interested in, like sustainable brands and, and just things that I've been talking about in my life because we all know they're listening. And I think because of that, I became more of a TikTok TikTok girly than an Instagram girly. And you may have heard me on this channel talk about TikTok several times in a fond and positive way. And if you haven't heard me do that, you might be new here. So maybe hit the subscribe button. Yes, I get ads on TikTok, but I can tell it's an ad as soon as I see it. My brain has learned to detect the little sponsored box at the bottom. And my For You page never let me down. Everywhere I scroll was something that I genuinely found value or interest in. Until recently, my For You page betrayed me and so I'm making this video. The topic at hand today is hyper consumerism and I don't put this cute little banner and sparkly sound because it's a good thing. It's just what the internet has glamorized most recently. I talk a lot about hyperconsumerism on this channel because I really think that the root of a lot of our environmental problems is hyperconsumerism. If you look at any environmental problem, you can pretty quickly tie it back to consumerism and be it even more hyperconsumerism and consumerism in Western culture. We're all aware of the climate crisis and that is a huge umbrella that kind of encompasses a lot of other issues that we've seen because of climate change, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tie consumerism to climate change. Everything you see around me was produced using fossil fuels. It's estimated that 60% of greenhouse gases are actually tied to the production of our goods. You think about plastic pollution in the oceans, our obsession with convenient consumerism is the reason for that plastic pollution. We talk about the issue of deforestation. What are those forests being torn down for? to create products, also to grow soy for beef, livestock, but also to make things. The point I'm trying to make is that the obsession with hyperconsumerism is not good for our planet. But there are other reasons that I think hyperconsumerism is problematic aside from our planet. But what we're seeing as over a billion people are using TikTok on a normal basis and almost 2 billion, I believe, for YouTube is this normalization of hyperconsumerism pushed on us by influencer culture. And there is more than one reason why this normalization of hyperconsumerism is negative. And the first one being our wallets. And I say that that is the first concern because it's something that speaks to everyone. No matter who you're talking to, if it hits them in their wallet, it hurts. People care about their financial stability and that makes sense to me and it should make sense to everyone because in the current society that we live in, money is freedom, money is comfort, money is safety. With that in context, the normalization of buying every little thing you see that might be interesting is leading us to a place where people have silly little Amazon packages is showing up at their house every day. That is being normalized on social media. Same thing with this new surgeons of Timu. If you want to see a whole video about that, let me know. I, I didn't realize it was taking over to the extent that it is. And that's not to say that this is all completely our fault because there have been plenty of studies showing that when we buy things, we get a hit of dopamine. It tells us that we're happy. I've always kind of thought that maybe that is an evolutionary result of being hunter gatherers, essentially, right? Back in the day when we had to hunt and gather for our food, if we came across something that we needed to survive, we took it. It doesn't matter if we needed it or not. We never knew when the next, you know, 
food or whatever it is, survival item, was going to come along. And so I think it makes sense that as we accumulate more things and we get that dopamine hit, we think we need to continue, continue, continue. All the while, there is marketing telling you that you should do that thing, which is also insidious, and they use psychological studies to see what's going to work best on your brain. And I think that's only made worse by people on the internet who you would normally look to for like helpful tips, like I said, entertainment, just relating to someone. And then you throw in all of these little things that are in your brain and they tell you to buy something and that just ups it so much more. It's leading to people buying more things than they could ever need. And a lot of people are in consumer debt in the US specifically. So I think normalization of this culture has a negative impact on our wallets. And like I say, I start with the wallet because everyone can relate to it, but I also think another huge problem with hyperconsumerism is mental health. I already explained how they use different tricks because of the way our brains work, but because of that dopamine hit when we buy something, that dopamine wears off pretty quickly, right? It only lasts a short period of time. And then you're now on this hamster wheel of chasing that type of dopamine hit. And it makes sense along with marketing culture and influencer culture that we now think that buying things equals happiness because that's a lie we've been sold our entire lives. But rates of depression and anxiety are only on the rise as is our GDP and the amount of things that we buy. The problem is now we're not hunter and gatherer collecting berries that we need to survive. We're now people gathering synthetic clothing that is going to outlast our life on this planet. And that brings me to the third problem with hyperconsumerism, which is the destruction of our planet, our shared home. The problem with consumerism today and the culture that I'm currently making this video to fight against is that we're not only buying things that we don't need, but oftentimes people are buying things that they don't even want. I think a lot of people don't even take the time to realize that in a week, they will not give two bucks about this weird kitchen gadget they bought. I think that things are being produced so cheaply now in such unethical ways now. And so many people on the internet are showing all these things they're constantly buying and it's so normal to do that, that people are ordering them with one click of a button because it's been made so simple. And then those things are just here cluttering up our homes, our landfills, our oceans, maybe decluttered along the way, maybe not likely broken in a week and got tossed to a landfill. I mean, the average American throws out 81 pounds of clothing per year. And the immediate defense is, well, I don't throw away my insert needless gadget here, I donate it. And the problem with that is two things. Number one, most things that are donated never get resold. They also end up in landfill. And the second issue is the majority of the environmental footprint of said thingy-mabob that you bought, the majority of that footprint is actually created before you even hit buy now. All of the resources have been extracted from the planet. It's been shipped all over the place to manufacture it using more fossil fuels. And likely if you have this gadget that you didn't find helpful or you useful and you're getting rid of, probably the person who maybe, if you're lucky, thrifts it, they're gonna find it useless too and it's going to end up in our landfills if we're lucky. And these are impacts that cannot be undone. They cannot be recycled. They cannot be maintained or repaired. The damage is done. And like I said, around 60% of greenhouse gas emissions are meant to come from things that we consume. So the solution isn't donating it. The solution is buying less stuff. And those are the points that I wanna speak to throughout the rest of the video. And I'm just prefacing you with that so that I don't just sound like I'm ranting, but I am making this video so that I don't lose my own mind. A survey on impulse shopping showed that 64% of Americans have increased their impulse shopping since 2022. I have no doubt that this is because of things like influencer culture, things like one-click buy rates, uh, normalization of hyper-consumerism in our society, and I have no doubt that this will have detrimental impacts on our planet if we don't figure out how to change this type of culture. But I wanted to talk about this specifically with some instances that I've had recently to really bring it to your attention and kind of make it a little bit more tangible. My presence on the internet has kind of always centered around sustainability because my life has kind of centered on sustainability for over a decade now, so I guess that makes sense. But largely also talking about anti-consumerism. I'm always talking about how the most sustainable thing we can do is not buy things. I've always ranted about things you don't need to buy. I've always talked about if you're gonna buy something, buy it secondhand. I've always been passionate about this. It's my whole message. It would be impossible for you to have found me on the internet and not know how strong strongly I feel about those things. But despite 
that. It's really difficult for me to post anything and people not ask, where'd you get that? What brand is that? How can I buy that? And it's really upsetting to me because if I'm experiencing this as someone who tries really hard to educate people on the internet about the dangers of hyper-consumerism, of instant gratification, uh, waiting periods before you buy things, of not like going through a process before you buy something and thinking of if you need it or if you even really want it. I can't imagine what comment sections on other creators content looks like. I can't imagine how many people are asking to links for every single thing they touch and how many things are being bought simply because someone is holding something, wearing something. Let me give you an example. So I have this top. It's like a knitted tank top. Yeah. It's a knitted tank top. And I wore it earlier this year in the spring because it had carrots on the bottom and it it is a beautiful like sweater. I'm not gonna lie to you. But the reason that I had it is because I was renting it from a clothing rental service. And I wore it one day to the farmer's market and I happened to record a few clips and I made some content on the internet from those clips. The type of content I made was literally an audio of a girl who was um, saying all these things that you shouldn't buy. Like the whole point of the post was de-influencing anti-consumerism and anti-haul essentially. That's what we called it back in my day. <laughs> but de-influencing, that's literally what the point of it was. And I'm not, I don't think I'm exaggerating at all when I say that half the comments were asking me where my shirt was from. And I just think about how that has become the cultural norm is for someone to see something, decide in a millisecond that they want it, and then click it and buy it. But this normalization of I see it, I like it, I want it, I bought it, is so, is so detrimental. And honestly, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I can't talk about uh, things that genuinely like I would use or wear certain pieces of clothing because people will immediately ask for the link. Um, and I generally don't give links. If something is not an essential, which, you know, a sweater wouldn't really fall under the category of essentials, but I also just don't generally give brands of things I'm wearing because 90% of the time it's thrifted and I don't wanna hype up whatever brand I'm wearing. And it's gotten to the point where I am very aware that if I wear something that is different or more interesting or I don't know, rare maybe, or or trendy maybe, I don't know what the words are, anything except a plain shirt, people are gonna ask me to link it, people are gonna ask me for the brand name, and I, I don't wanna contribute to more consumerism. So I've gotten to the point where I, when I get dressed in the morning, I'm questioning what I'm wearing because I don't wanna contribute to more consumerism. And this leads into my next point, which is affiliate marketing. Specifically because I'm a creator, um, it's a little bit, um, what's the word? What did he say? Oh. Convoluted to talk about. Because I do believe that if people are buying things because you recommended it, you definitely deserve to make a commission on that. It doesn't make sense that I am going to give free marketing to a brand and bring them customers, but I don't get any commission off of that. Like I think it makes sense for creators to be paid for their work and bringing new customers to a brand is a job. I think the issue comes uh, with this hyper consumerism narrative um, and this influencer is just taking it too far is when you're buying things just to link them, when you're buying things just to talk about them. When you're, I've seen people talking about things on TikTok specifically where they just put screenshots of something they saw on Amazon in a TikTok and then they link it in their storefront and they never even bought it. They can't tell you if it's good. They're just contributing to this cycle of consumerism constantly. People will literally follow people on TikTok so that they can tell them what to buy. It is normal to follow people online just so that you can aspire to look like them and then for people to buy things to to meet that goal. And that's the part of influencer culture, of hyper-consumerism, and of affiliate marketing that is leading to seriously, seriously unprecedented levels of consumerism. And, and that leads me to the most detrimental part of this video, which is the reason that I was inspired to make it, and that is, 
TikTok shop. My For You page has turned straight into commercials and not for anything that I would want. I don't, and it's organic content, okay? This is not sponsored content. It's organic stuff showing up on my feed, presenting these small businesses to me of things that I, I don't. I couldn't care any less about. Like I used to literally meet new people and one of my favorite like icebreaker questions was what side of TikTok are you on? Like what is your For You page? Tell me about it. I need to know what kind of person you are. Tell me what your For You page is. And now I just, let me show you some of the products that I have recently been marketed. Oh, I can't do that with this mic. Let me show you some of the things I have recently been marketed. Please don't mind my giant pop socket. It was a gift. Um, I'm sober. <laughs> For the most part, I, I maybe drink like a cocktail less than a handful of times a year. I rarely drink, I identify as sober. Why? TikTok, did you let me down so badly to the point of giving me this incredibly, incredibly useless product? It's, a sh it's just a shot. It's just a shot glass, but a longer shape with like a, a mouth thing on. What is the point? A shot takes like less than a second to consume. Why do we need something to make it different? It's a second of your life. This is really, and, and they're still using a glass in this literal video. They just put, just put the alcohol in there. Peel off lip stain. I'm so sorry, what? I've always talked about these specific areas of consumerism, uh, really any area of consumerism, can be justified if it's something that brings you joy, that you're passionate about, that you actually want and will use long term. I think that there are people out there who this makes sense to market to, people who are really like makeup and want their lips to be stained all day. Do I think it's a little silly? Yes, so why would this show up on my For You page other than the fact that TikTok shop is the new cool thing that TikTok is trying to promote and they want more people to be buying things they want. TikTok shop, what this has taught me, they want a piece of that Amazon Prime pie. They are requiring these small businesses to ship out things within three days and many of them have complained about how unrealistic that is for your average small business because TikTok probably can't figure out what I would buy I think is the problem. I, I don't know if I've ever told you this before but my partner Madison she doesn't buy things. She is in terms of marketing, the way that people would market to um, a certain person, you know, you've seen these videos of like webs of how they categorize you into all these things and what your interests are and blah, 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 blah. Madison doesn't fit any of them. She gets ads for Walmart, M&Ms, whereas my ads are very targeted like sustainable brands, linen and reusables and like very niche things like recycled gold, this and that. Yeah, my ads are very targeted. I, that might be a whole interesting thing to talk about separately. But I think TikTok is experiencing that issue with me because in the past, the reason, like I said, that I stuck with TikTok when I kind of like left Instagram a little bit was because my ads were never targeted. I was never tempted by the things I was seeing on TikTok. And, and that might be this new push of um, TikTok shop that they're doing and maybe I'm just getting the most random things that I would never buy because they want to push TikTok shop, but they don't know what to give me that I would buy. I can only assume that this is a microplastic lip gloss, a lip gloss made from plastic um, with a bunch of glitter in it. I don't think this should exist. I don't think uh, producing literal microplastic should be legal. It's dangerous. So I definitely don't want to see this on my For You page. Okay, this thing was really silly. This is not the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but like this person is putting these rings in a regular bowl of water and then a bowl of water that shakes and proving that it's easier to clean it because the bowl is shaking. But I also just think like, you could you could clean your ring without this with like a toothbrush and some water. Um, you also can take your jewelry to a jeweler to have it cleaned, usually for free. The jewelers that I've went to have always cleaned my jewelry for free. You don't need a whole separate device in your home to clean your jewelry. Also, why would your jewelry be covered in dirt? What the fuck? is this i saw this and i watched the whole thing and i was genuinely just so confused what this is but i think they're all self-defense um items which like not the worst thing but the fact that they rolled out this suitcase and then they put proceeded to put like 10 different self-defense items in this box was a little bit it's just too much for me i just 
what and what is that? Is that a taser? I feel like if you got a taser, you don't need the rest of this stuff. Is that just me? And since becoming much more exposed to this side of TikTok, I've just come to realize why TikTok made me buy it is also a like genre in and of itself. And all of this got me thinking that I wanted to make this video because I'm I'm at a different place in my life than I was maybe like three years ago, if we remember the anti-Hall Shelby. And I think this is similar to that, but I do feel like back in the day there was a little bit of more of a like trying to shame people into realizing how silly consumerism was. I do think I was, I was hoping to hit someone like younger me in the feels enough to be like, oh damn, I really am like wasting my money, harming my mental health, harming the planet by buying things I don't need. I think that was my goal, but I think my approach was different. Whereas the reason I wanted to make this video today and my kind of outlook on talking about anti-consumerism and explaining that it really can be the solution to helping our planet is because I want a culture shift. I hate that the things that we've talked about in this video today have been normalized and my goal with my platform is now to present these things that are problematic, not to shame anyone for them, but to show you why it's problematic and to show you that there is an alternative. That there are people out there who live happy, joyful, happy lives and they don't have to spend money on things all the time for things that they don't need and they really don't even want. And that's kind of my goal for existing online recently. And also to push against this narrative that has become normalized in like environmentalist culture specifically, um, that individuals can't do anything. I think that is completely untrue. I think it's false. The reason that Amazon is as big as it is, is not because Jeff Bezos is some sort of genius. It's because it's convenient and it's easy and all of the other things that we talked about and people buy, 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 buy. That's how Amazon gets as big as it does by people like you and me buy, 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 buying things. And I do believe that on an individual level, buying less is helping the planet. I do believe on an individual level, we can help shift the culture. And so I do think it's important for all of us to participate in anti-consumerism, but also the systemic solution to this is something called degrowth, uh, something I can make a whole separate video about, but it is essentially focusing our economy on not consistently going like this. Right now, the system that we live in depends on us constantly producing new goods to please shareholders, to keep their investments going up and up and up, and that is impossible to do on a finite planet where we don't have enough resources to continuously be producing new things, and that while we're trying to do that under the system that we live under, we are just destroying the planet that we need to live. Our current economic system relies on this type of consumerism to exist. If you took yourself out of the system of constantly being on a hamster wheel of buying new things, the system that we live under would not be able to exist. And that's kind of my message for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took something from it. Let me know if you want separate videos about any of the topics that we talked about. Also, let me know how you felt about this mic situation. I'm not listening to it back as I'm recording, but I hope you don't hate it. Sorry if you felt like I've yelled at you before. Hopefully this made it a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to give this video a like if you liked it and remember, do your best and advocate for the rest. Bye guys.